Hi, I'm Lauren with Vacuum Cleaner Market. Congratulations, you have just purchased the Mila Classic C1 Cat and Dog Canister Vacuum Cleaner. So what I'm here to do right now is to show you everything that you should have received in your box. And then I'm gonna give you a little bit of a detailed on what each of those components are. Then I'm gonna show you how to use them and assemble your machine. Give you a little tips and tricks along the way to help you really optimize the use of your new vacuum cleaner. So this is your canister. This is your metal telescoping wand, your hard flooring parquet attachment, your turbo handheld attachment. This is for your upholstered surfaces. You may or may not have these three cleaning attachments already attached to the bottom of this Vario clip. That's what this U-shaped clip is. If so, there's some helpful pictures on the underside of it to show you exactly which tool goes where. And then you have your electric carpeting power head, and then you have your hose and your handle. So why don't you just take a few minutes, make sure that everything you see here that I just um, went over is accounted for in your box. Before I forget, you should have two manuals. One is gonna be for your electric head, and then one is gonna be for your canister. And then also you're going to have a charcoal filter in a box, and I will show you what to do with that. So make sure you have all of these components. If for some reason you're missing something that is on this table, please reach out to us. We will help you get anything that you need, um, but just take a few minutes, make sure everything's accounted Accounted for and then once you come back I will show you a little bit more in depth of what they are and then we'll use and assemble your vacuum cleaner. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you a little bit more in depth about each of these components that are included with your vacuum cleaner. So this is your electric telescoping wand. This is how you are going to add length to your cleaning radius. So you can attach your cleaning attachments to the end of your wand. You, this is also how you're gonna clean your flooring. This will help you clean the high things that you want to get to like cabinet faces, um, tops of your door jams, down low and then how you get under furniture and under beds. This is your hard flooring attachment. This is your parquet attachment. So this tool is for hard flooring. This tool can also be used on delicate carpeting, which is a nice feature about this tool. And how it cleans your hard flooring is it has bristles of very lengths on the underside of it. This will get deep down into the cracks and crevices of any hard surface flooring that you have. And also it'll get really into the grout lines. So this tool is very handy. This is your handheld turbo attachment. This will be for your upholstered surfaces. The reason that this comes with this cat and dog model is because this is really good at cleaning pet hair. So if you have carpeted stairs, this would also be a nice use for this tool. You can also use it on your upholstered surfaces and this tool is really good in the cars. This one used to come in Mila's car accessory kit. And the reason being is because it's a little bit smaller, it's very easy to get in cracks and cracks of cars, so this will come in handy. This is your dusting brush, your upholstery tool, and your crevice nozzle. So these are going to be stored on your Vario clip, and then once we attach your hose to your canister, they are going to clip to the base of your hose, and they'll just glide along with you, so they're within easy reach. You don't have to worry about losing your attachments. So this is your electric carpeting power head. And I, if you are standing behind this power head as I am, you're gonna see two little levers. The one on the left is to release your wand from the upright locked position. And I'll show you how to do that right now. So if you step down, this will be how you are going to clean your carpeted surfaces. And then the lever on the right hand side, this is your height adjustment. So you will have five height settings on this power head. So level one is going to be the closest to your carpeted surfaces and level five is gonna be the furthest away. So the easiest way of finding what height setting you're gonna use for the different carpeted surfaces that are in your home is start on level five and work your way down so it's very easy to just steer your vacuum around yet you are picking up every single thing that is in your cleaning path. And I will show you how this works. What you're gonna do is you are just going to press this and it will go either up from one to five and then it'll go from five to one. So start on level five, which is there, and then slowly work your way down. It should be effortless to push your carpeting attachment over your carpeted surfaces. If you are struggling to push, you were probably on the right or the wrong height setting. 
So this is your hose and your handle. I'm gonna show you a little bit on your handle. There is an X and an O, and the reason I'm showing you this is because the X is going to turn your spinning brush roll on your carpeting power head on. So that means the bristles are going to be spinning. When it's on the O setting, it's gonna turn them off. So if you turn, if you attach everything to your vacuum, turn it on, and for some reason your power head is not turning on, make sure you have it on the X setting. The O setting will come in very handy if you have any rugs with tassels or if you have any delicate carpeting surfaces in your home that you cannot clean with a spinning brush roll. This will just allow you to clean it without a spinning, spinning brush roll with no agitation. So it'll just clean your carpeting with pure suction. But it's always recommended, obviously make sure with your manufacturer for your carpeting that you can use a spinning brush roll. If you can, it's always best to clean your carpeted surfaces um, with agitation. You'll get the deepest clean. Now on the other side of your hose, you're probably wondering what the small little cord is, and I will show you how to plug this into your vacuum. But when this cord is attached, that will make sure that your carpeting power head has power. If this cord is not attached, you're not gonna be able to use your power head. So I'll show you that in just a little bit. So I do want to show you a few things on your canister body first before we assemble everything. And I'm going to show you where to find the name of your Mila, your model number, and your serial number. So on the front portion of your vacuum cleaner, just below the Mila logo, you are gonna see the name of your vacuum cleaner. So knowing the name, the model, and the serial number will really help you in the future know what bags and filters to take and all of the compatible accessories if you choose to purchase anything in addition to what you see here. So if you flip your vacuum around on the wheel side, this will be the side that is gliding around on your flooring you are gonna see a silver sticker. And on the silver sticker, there's gonna be two things that I want you to pay attention to. One is gonna be your model number. And your model number is gonna start with the letter S and followed by either letters, numbers, or a combination of both of those. That is your model number for your machine. Below that, you're going to find your serial number. And your serial number starts with the zero, zero, slash, and then a nine digit number. That nine digit number is what you're going to use to um, register your machine with Mila for any warranty aspects. And then what you would also use if for some reason something breaks or something malfunctions, we're gonna need that serial number to help you troubleshoot it and to get you the correct replacement if that needs to happen. So model and serial number are on the bottom side of your vacuum cleaner, and then the name is on the front portion of your canister. So I'm gonna show you how to open your canister. So there is a little lever on the top portion of your canister if your canister is sitting up like this, and you're gonna squeeze it, and you are going to open it upwards. I'm opening it downwards for demonstration purposes. So this is your bag and your bag clip. You are gonna have one bag pre-installed and two filters pre-installed. This is how your vacuum should come. So I'm gonna remove this bag. And what you do is you simply just pull down on this bag clip, and then we want this clip to stay in the vacuum at all times. This is your bag clip holder, and this is gonna help your vacuum. It's gonna keep your bag in the proper placement so that all of the debris goes straight into your bag through the two levels of filtration for your vacuum, and it doesn't spill out on the inside of your canister because that's a mess. So. Leave this in. If you for some reason have pulled this out, please reinstall it. If you have trouble doing that, please reach out to us. We'll ha we're happy to help. If for some reason this clip gets tossed away, sometimes that happens, um, we have these readily available as well. So just don't use your vacuum without this bag clip. And I wanna show you there's your motor filter on the inside of your canister. And you are gonna pull down on that little blue grate and then this houses your motor filter. This motor filter is to be changed every four vacuum bags or every one box. So this will help protect your motor, help keep your vacuum operating to the fullest capacity and um, it will actually extend the life of your motor. You change bags, your filters, simplest way of prolonging the life of your vacuum. So this machine does not come with your charcoal filter pre-installed. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. But first we need to remove the base level filtration that this model comes with. So what you're gonna do is you're going to take this portion out. So you're gonna pull up 
and then you're gonna pull out and we're gonna remove this plastic. And we are also going to remove this air clean filter. So I would personally keep these around. Um, the, this, if you ever wanted to get it replaced, is a little expensive. And it's always nice to, if you for some reason run out of your charcoal filter, you always want to make sure you're not stressing your motor and full filters will put strain on your motor. So just keep this around. It's always nice to have a backup. So then for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do and then I'm gonna turn it around and, and do it the opposite way. So what we're gonna do is these little protrusions are gonna match indentations and you're going to push this filter back and down. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. It's so much easier if I just do it. So we're gonna put match those protrusions and then we're gonna push it down. So this is installing your charcoal filter. So your charcoal filter is just below a HEPA filter in terms of a filtration level, what air is gonna be released back into your home. And this is going to have activated charcoal granules on the inside of it and it's gonna absorb odors, specifically pet dander odors. So if you are a pet owner, which I'm sure you probably are, you just bought the cat and dog vacuum cleaner. Um, this is great for pet owners. It masks that pet odor smell. So you can actually use your vacuum bags full to their full lifespan, as opposed to having to keep changing your vacuum bags as well. So it's a very nice feature. So, but if you wanted to, you could upgrade to a HEPA filter. And um, at any point in time, you just need to make sure that you're buying anything that ends in the 30. So this is your AA30 charcoal filter. If you wanted to upgrade to a HEPA filter, you would use the SFHA30 HEPA filter. So I am going to reinstall the bag into the clip. Oh, the arrows on the bag match the direction of the arrows on the bag clip. So you just match up the arrows, make sure it's fully installed in there. And then this is completely normal. These bags are very large and they fold to a 3D ca capacity. So just make sure that you just tuck it in there and then close the body of your canister. So now I am going to show you a little bit about your suction settings and your power button, how to find it. So this button right here, the circle with the line through it, that is your power button. That's gonna turn your vacuum on and off. The opposite button has a little cord winder with a circle on it. That is gonna wind your cord back into your canister. So you never have to worry about winding a cord, which is really, really nice. And then your Mila comes with six suction settings. So I'm gonna show you all of those suction settings and what those little symbols on the outer portion of your machine look like. So if you're looking from left to right, it starts at minimum. So all the way left is minimum, that's a drapery symbol. Then you go up to your upholstery symbol. Then you have an area rug symbol. Then you have an ear symbol. And this might be really helpful for you if your dogs or your cats um, are sensitive to your vacuum, the sound of your vacuum. Mila's are very quiet, but this will operate your vacuum at a lower decibel level. So it's very nice. Or if you want to get some cleaning done while the kids are napping. Then you have a carpeting symbol, and then you go to your hard flooring or the parquet symbol. Personally, I always recommend that you vacuum your user vacuum on max suction whenever possible. You're going to get the most debris off of your flooring, and you're going to get a better, deeper clean. The only reason you need to really be turning your vacuum down is if you need it at that lower volume, or if you're doing specialty clean as your vacuuming delicate furniture, delicate rugs, or if you're doing blinds or drapery. So there's one thing I wanna show you right before we start assembling. I'm gonna show you how to assemble your vacuum cleaner, and that is on the back portion. So if you are looking at your vacuum, it's gonna be on the right side. If you're behind your vacuum, it's at the left side. This little indentation, it's like a male, female. Um, this is where this plug is going to plug into. And the reason that this is important is this is what's going to power your carpeting power head. So this is going to attach in here. And I know you're probably thinking it's not there, I promise. Just look really, really hard. And it's gonna be right here, just under your handle. So I'm gonna show you how to assemble and use your machine. So what we need to do first is we're gonna need to attach your hose to your canister body. So if you have your vacuum laying down, it'll probably be a better angle, but for my purposes, I'm gonna do it standing up. So then once you've attached your hose to the canister, you are gonna plug this little plug into 
the little reservoir that I showed you earlier. So this is gonna make sure that you have electric going to your carpeting power head. So now I'm gonna lay this down. There we go. And then I'm gonna show you. So the nice thing about these Milas is that you can use your attachments um, these cleaning attachments, your flooring attachment, your carpeting power head directly with your handle, which is a very nice feature. If you want to clean your carpeted stairs like this, if you have um, a high reach carpeted area, if you want to attach your, oh, and how you would release your attachment would be you're gonna step down and pull up. If you wanted to do your cars in this fashion, this is how I personally do it. I don't need the added length of the wand. So it's a really nice feature to have. So then now I'm gonna show you, there's this Vario clip. And if you're looking, there's a little indent right there. And that is gonna match up with um, a little protrusion on your hose. So if you just slide this on and it will click on, this will be how your tools will just be stored on the body of your canister within really, really easy reach so you don't have to worry about losing them. So they'll just glide along with you wherever you go. But if you're gonna be cleaning flooring, you're gonna want to install your wand and how you do that just like that and again how you telescope is with pushing this button and then extending or retracting and then I always like to show everybody for storage purposes the Mila's all have this little docking station on the back portion and then this model also has one on the back side where your model and serial number were and that is for storage purposes so I personally store my machine like this but if you have a smaller area of surface that you need to store it in you can stand it up and you can wrap your hose around the canister and tuck it in on the back portion so that's a really nice easy feature and then also again to remove your handle you would just squeeze that little button at the top and pull up and then you can attach your cleaning attachments your upholstery tool your crevice nozzle your dusting brush at the base of your handle just like this so very easy reach so let me just put this back so this is the Mila Classic C1 Cat and Dog. I hope I was able to answer all of your questions on how to use and assemble your machine. If there was something that I failed to mention, please reach out to us. You can do so via the live chat feature on our website. You can give us a phone call or you can email us. We are happy and here to help. We have US-based live customer service agents ready to help you. I'm Lauren with Vacuum Cleaner Market. Happy vacuuming.